Hi folks, in the last few videos we've looked at the SOLO model and in the SOLO model our model of household behavior is very simple. We just assume that households consume and save a constant fraction of their income. Now I want to move on to the Ramsey model and in the Ramsey model we allow households to choose their savings optimally. And so it's a little more sophisticated model of household behavior um, and we're going to see how to solve it. And in particular, I'm going to look at the model in continuous time. And I'm going to solve it in a way that it may be slightly different from ways you've seen it before. Typically, when you look at the continuous time Ramsey model, you use Hamiltonians to solve it. I'm going to use a slightly different approach. But anyway, let's set up the model. So households want to maximize their lifetime utility. And their lifetime utility, I'm going to denote by an integral from zero to capital T of the discounted utility they receive from consumption at every point T. Now I'm going to take the limit of this as T goes to infinity at some point, but uh, I'll just leave it like that for now. And they're going to maximize this by choosing consumption at every point in time from T equals zero to capital T. And this is of course subject to their budget constraint. And their budget constraint looks like this. The change in their wealth over time, so their wealth is A, and this A dot here signifies the derivative of A with respect to time. So this is the change in their wealth over time, or their savings. That is just equal to the interest income they receive on their wealth, plus some other income. Let's call it labor income, or I'll just call it YT less their consumption. Now, like I say, typically when you see the continuous time Ramsey model being introduced, you, you solve it using a Hamiltonian. I'm going to use a different approach. And I'm going to use a, the, essentially the calculus of variations. And that means that I'm going to choose this function C. So C is a function of time now. I'm going to choose that function optimally to maximize this integral. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to do something with this budget constraint because at the moment it's in the flow form. Your wealth evolves over time according to this equation. But I want to get it in integral form and convert it into a lifetime budget constraint. And we do that just by integrating this, this first order linear differential equation. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, there's plenty of resources available to, to see that so I'm just going to do it very quickly. The way you do that is just to move this capital income, the, the interest income onto the left hand side of the equation. In order to integrate this ODE we need to multiply both sides by an integrating factor and that integrating factor is going to be this. So it's essentially a discount factor. We're discounting by the market interest rate. And the reason we do this is when we multiply both sides of this equation by this integrating factor and then integrate with respect to time, on the left hand side, we're going to get something very simple. And um, we'll see what that is. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to denote this by. CT, just so I don't have to keep writing out this whole thing. So I'm going to call this whole thing CT. Okay, so let's multiply both sides of our ODE by this integrating factor. And let's integrate both sides with respect to time. And in particular, I'm going to integrate them between zero and capital T. And on the left hand side, if you do this, you just get C capital T times AT minus C0 times A0. But C0 here, remember this is just defined like this. So if we take this integral from 0 to 0, we're just going to get 0 in the exponent here. And so e to the power of 0 is just 1. So this is 
C0 is just 1. And on the right hand side, we're just going to get this integral of non labor income less consumption from 0 to t multiplied by this integrating factor. So now, remember I said I wanted to look at the limit of this problem as big T goes to infinity, so the infinite horizon problem. And so let's take limits of this budget uh, constraint now. So on the left-hand side, we get the limit of CT times AT. And that's going to be equal to A0, just moving that on the other side, plus now this integral from 0 to infinity of CT times YT minus CT. Now, it's very common to just say that this thing here tends to 0 as T goes to infinity. And it does. But this is actually an optimality condition. It's called the transversality condition. You may recognize it. And this just says that your wealth should not grow faster than the interest rate. I'm actually not going to do that. I'm not going to assume that this is equal to zero. Instead, I'm going to assume it's greater than or equal to zero. So this is the no Ponzi condition. This is a constraint that I'm imposing on the household. This says that the household's debt cannot grow faster than the interest rate. In other words, they can't keep borrowing and borrowing all the time, accumulating more and more debt, rolling it over and never paying it back. I'm ruling that out. That's a constraint that I'm imposing on the household. And with this constraint, we can see that the optimality conditions of the household, once we solve this, uh, this problem, is going, to sh is going to lead this to being exactly equal to zero. Okay, but for now, let's just rearrange this budget constraint and leave it as an inequality. And we're just going to rearrange it so that our present value of consumption from zero to infinity sorry, is less than or equal to the wealth plus present value of your income. Now I'm going to treat this intertemporal budget constraint as an inequality and maximize this, op this uh, objective function up here, the discounted lifetime utility, subject to this single intertemporal budget constraint. So let me just write the Lagrangian for that. So this is our Lagrangian, and in the next video, we're going to set about maximizing this. So I'll see you then. Thanks very much.